Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the November 2nd meeting of the CRA Advisory Board. Uh, can we all begin, please, with the Pledge of Allegiance? have a quorum present um, there's some items we can discuss uh, which are some discussion items um, council would you like to begin yeah uh, we'll proceed with uh, we'll start with that agenda item number two uh, it'll be the audit presentation by HCT and we have mr. Harvey here Roger Harvey Good day, my name is Roderick Harvey, engagement partner for the North Miami CRA. You should have in your packet a complete uh, audit report for the year ended September 30, 2014. So please roll back in your minds over a year uh, because we're going to be talking about the numbers and the financials as of September 30, 2014. I also want to note to you, if you may be thinking, wow, this seems to be a time, that we did issue the audit report uh, back on July 28th, all right? So please also note that in your mind. We're just now doing this meeting, but the audit has been issued uh, some time ago. All right, again, my name is Roderick Harvey with uh, HCT. We are the audit firm of record for the North Miami uh, Community Redevelopment Agency. We issued a unqualified audit opinion on your year ended 2014. We will talk about your management letter comments later, uh, but for now I want to give a couple of uh, amounts, uh, look at some comparisons. I always think that this is important when you look at where were we and then where did we end up. So when we do a quick comparison, and you can look on page six, I'm actually right in your audit book on page six in the management discussion and analysis area, we can see that revenues at the end of 2013 was 602,000. We ended up with revenues for the same period, 2014, at 895,000. That is an increase of 49%. You may say, okay, Harvey, that sounds good. How did we expend those funds? When you look at what we did in 2013, we expended funds to the tune of $1.8 million. In the same period, 14, we expended funds to the tune of $1.1 million. That is a decrease of 699,000 or 38%, okay? Mm -hmm. And then let's look at our decrease in net position for the period 2013. Our net decrease was 1.2 million and for the same time period in 14, 239,000. Also want to note to you our fund balance has remained relatively stable when you look at uh, our period 2.7 for 13 versus 2.4 for the same period 14, which is a 9% decrease, which is, which is a, a pretty nice decrease, but when you look at the changes in revenues and expenses, I think we did a good job of holding that pretty steady, all right? So also want to direct you to our asset balance, which will be our balance sheet, statement of position, which is on page nine. And I'll just throw out some, some quick numbers. When you look at total assets, and again, I'm talking about the period September 30, 2014, total assets, 2.8 million, most of that asset balance was made up of cash and cash equivalents at 2.2. Due to other governments, 385,000. And then when you look at our net position, uh, we had a very good net position again of the 2.4 million. 
dollars. So let's talk about the things that us auditors, we as auditors, write up as your management letter comments, things that we think are so important that we should note it in your audit. One thing that I do want to highlight to you is we have a duty as the audit firm is to report on the status of comments given in the subsequent year. <coughs> so when we look at our 2013 comments, it was one that related to fund accounting and bookkeeping. Our review during the 2014 period is that uh, item was implemented. Now, as we look at the 2014 findings, uh, and again, I'm on page 24. Uh, finding number one deals with total payroll expenses as filed with federal and state agencies. Total payroll expenses in a general ledger for the year should agree to forms filed with federal and state agencies. The agency staff did not file federal and state forms appropriately. Recommendation, we recommend that the agency prepare payroll reconciliations quarterly when filing federal and state forms. We also recommend the agency develop and implement policies and procedures to ensure proper reconciliations and a review is performed on all forms filed. Management does have a chance or uh, opportunity to respond, and they did. Management concurs with this recommendation. The agency faced a number of administrative challenges in successfully overhauling the agency's focus. This year's audit finding revealed one casualty that resulted from filing of prior staff's payroll. More importantly, now that the CRA is fully integrated with the City of North Miami's financial management and payroll system, a discrepancy like this is very unlikely to reoccur. Quarterly payroll reconciliations will be performed to ensure appropriate filings with federal and state agencies. That is ML, or what we call management letter comment number one. Uh, rolling on and moving on to management letter comment number two, which deals with weekly timesheets and authorization. For any given period, each employee is required to have a timesheet confirming hours work. Timesheets are also required to have a sign-off by the executive director approving the hours work and acknowledging a review. Recommendation. Implement strong internal controls over record keeping and maintenance. Here's management's response on management letter comment two. Management concurs with this recommendation. Management also noted that as of June 2014, the CRA had reorganized its staffing and its physical location, physical location, where operations, where operations were brought in-house to City Hall, which will strengthen the internal controls. So those, as read, list out our management letter comments for the year 2014 we will also go back and review the status of those comments um, if we, when we do the 2015 audit. So those are the highlights that I have noted um, for myself to present to you tonight. And if the board chair so allows, I will do my best to answer any questions you may have. If I cannot answer those questions, I will be more, more than glad to provide an email to everyone uh, providing succulent answers to the questions provided. Does anyone have any questions? I think I do. Yes. Uh, Sir, can you mute and say your name? Just for the, the and the yeah. microphone. Okay. Hudson Urbillard. Uh, in regards to the uh, deficiencies that you talked about. Uh, yes, sir. The first one, the payroll. Did you consider its impact in terms of uh, the amount uh, that could be, because uh, you sort of categorizing here as a significant deficiency? Um, in, in other words, were there some issues or where this amount could have had a material impact to what's being reported? In other words, materialize the, 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 the issue. Did we look at the materiality of the issue? Right. Yes, we did. Um, let me just give a couple levels here. We have various levels of findings. You have just a regular finding. Then you have a significant deficiency, and then you have a material weakness. The material weakness is the worst, okay? So when you look at a significant deficiency, 
by definition, it says that somebody in their normal course of duties should have caught or had the ability to catch an error. So that's why we highlight this one. Uh, yes, the amounts are important, but payroll is pretty routine. So more than just the amount is, is there, is there a, a person in place or a procedure in place that would check or catch this error? And so because of that, we noted it, noted it this way. And I also think management's response is very telling in that they are going to implement the people, the system, to make sure going forward this error will not happen because it will be checks and balances in place. And I'd like to add, um, this is Rasha, again, this is the fiscal year 13-14 where the past staff took, was managing it for two-thirds of the year. Mm -hmm. And the CRA, when they in, in reorganized it and brought it inside, we managed to the last two months mm -hmm. of the fiscal year. Mm -hmm. So this covers the outside staff that's no longer here that we had to work with and, and so on, and then the past, the last two months uh, of reorganizing. So um, I'm very happy that Mr. Harvey caught, you know, that. But in terms of reorganizing and, and getting it running. I think we did a, a very good job. I mean, if that is the only bump in in the audit, we are very c comfortable and confident that you know we made everything we need to do. And actually, we even have the finance department here also present, and they check everything for us. We do our monthly financials now, <coughs> quarterly <coughs> statements, and so on and so forth, just like the city does. There are four, uh, Terry Henley. Uh, there are four major issues from or issues from the last audit that that staff. Uh, implemented this year was fund-based accounting, uh, having assets on both the city side and the CRA side that was addressed, monthly reconciliation, and overall agency management. Staff took those those four issues and we, we worked hard on it this year. Again, this is two months of the current staff and ten months of the previous staff, and there was one casualty in following the old staff's paperwork, uh, and we, moving forward, we won't have that issue at all because we have now that it's in-house, we do do timesheets, uh, and we have all the same systems in place that the, the current city employees have. So it's it's a uh, it won't it won't occur again. Any, Any other questions? Okay. Thank well, you. Well, thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure to work with the CRA this year. Thank yeah. you so much. Last month, the, the board approved the uh, fiscal year 15-16 budget, and in that we had a public safety officer um, to patrol the downtown area. And um, after meeting with the advisory committee and also the CRA board, trying to figure out how to make it work, either do we have a police officer, do we hire security guards, and so on. So the police department was able to find a, a, a way to make it meet both our needs. So the Chief Burgess is here, and Commander Beige is here also to explain to you what the off-duty police officers are going to do for the um, downtown area. Good evening. Thank you, Rasha. Um, what I want to do is mention, I want to just thank the entire CRA. Uh, it's something like this that's important, particularly in the downtown area, to have some type of visibility, interaction with the community, and particularly with the businesses. That's one-on-one. -on -one. We have four COTS program, but they cover the entire city. So I just think the, the division here, maybe this is something I could pass out throughout the entire area. I'm going to let the, our coordinator, who will be handling the uh, aspect of it to the CRA, versus just having a full-time officer. Uh, we got a nice little uh, insured coverage for the remainder of the year that you would be interested in. Thank you, Chief. Members of the board, I believe each of you have in your package the sheet that we have that outlines the police officer for the downtown area. As Rasha said, we had debated different options for going about it, and the best option was for an off-duty officer. The off-duty officer would be additional hours that the officer would work, similar to how you would see an officer at Publix or at some of the banks that are working in off-duty capacity. The red highlighted box would be the area of focus for the off-duty officer, which would range from 120 Fourth Street 
up to 126th Street from 6th Ave over to 10th Ave, which would cover the downtown corridor and the parking lots adjacent to the downtown corridor. Because there's big parking lots that are underutilized along 126th Street, and there's some parking lots here on 124th Street that are underutilized. We looked at hours and staffings and goals and objectives for the officers, and from speaking to different people, we got different points of views and different opinions. Some people wanted the officer here during the daytime, primarily for City Hall and the Municipal Complex. Other people wanted the officer here at nighttime for the new cafe that's coming here next to City Hall and for some of the other establishments that stay open late at night, such as Billy's Pub, Mocha Cafe, and Luna Star across the street, and the other new restaurant that'll be coming here to the east of City Hall to try and encourage people to come out here in the evening hours. So we took a balanced approach to that, and you can see the schedule, the tentative schedule on the block in the block in the center. We were proposing from Monday through Friday, two shifts, a nine to two shift. The nine to two would cover the morning hours. We've gotten complaints in the morning time from stuff that either happened overnight that needs to be reported, or from loiterers and other people hanging out as the business is open in the morning. Some of the business owners will call us to say that somebody's loitering behind their business or somebody's hanging out behind their business and they feel uncomfortable opening the businesses in the morning. So we wanted to accommodate that opening of the businesses and the lunchtime crowd and also City Hall when they first open and the people coming in and out of City Hall. So that'd be the nine to two shift that you can see during the week. Then we would take a break from two to five and we'd come back in from five to 10 on Monday through Thursday. Friday and Saturday we'd go later to 12 and to 1 a.m. to accommodate a heavier traffic on the weekends. The afternoon shift would be more encompassed to the notion of trying to bring people to the downtown in that evening hours for dinner time, for events at the Mocha, for stuff going on in the plaza, for meetings that go on at City Hall after hours, for anything that went on in the evening hours. There's not much that goes on past that 10 or 11 o'clock time frame, especially during the week, and that's where we drove that cutoff time. With the amount that was allotted, this was the optimal schedule that we could that would cover all the basis that was presented to us. You can see some of the bullet points towards the bottom that some of the stuff that was asked was that they wanted to have something with high visibility. So we'll instruct our officers that it's not a driving beat that'll either be on foot, on Segway, or possibly on bike. So they'll be out there in contact with the community throughout their tour. Regular contact with the business owners. The officers will be instructed to go and talk to every single business owner and we will give informal and formalized crime prevention tips. Informal stuff may be something as simple as, hey, last night a car got broken into on 10th Avenue, we just wanted to make you aware of it. More formalized stuff would be, make sure your windows are clear from the outside so people can see, to see if they have security cameras, do they have deadbolt locks on their windows. It'd be more SEPTEC training type stuff. They'd be able to respond for calls for service what's inside the red box. So they would have basically an officer available instantly available to anything that happened inside the red area. One of the questions that was asked by the CRA staff is would they ever be required to leave outside that area? And generally the answer would be no, unless there's some type of emergency situation which endangered the immediate life of another person or an officer in need of assistance. From time to time they may be required, but it'd be very rare and very infrequent that they leave outside that red area. The directed patrol inside City Hall, especially during the daytime, they would be directed to come into City Hall, walk through the floors, and then walk around the municipal complex, such as the museum and the other city outbuildings. They can also be used, as I said, for the crime prevention seminars, and we'd also document any activity, business contacts, enforcement actions that the officers were to take throughout their patrol, and we would be presentable to come each, I guess you guys meet monthly to the CRA advisory board meeting, and then to the actual CRA meeting to give the report and give presentations like we are right now where we could take any feedback from the CRA advisory board or from the CRA board, and we could adjust our plan as we went out throughout the week. And you can see the total price brought us in at 123, and the allotted amount was 125. We left a slight cushion in there, just in case there was ever a special event or if we ever needed to add some extra coverage somewhere. And that's the formal presentation that I had prepared for you guys. Okay. Any questions, comments? Yes, one, but let the uh, record reflect that uh, Dr. Neal has joined us. We haven't done roll call yet. Yes, one question. Has there been discussion or can there be discussion about taking that 125th Street down to 5th Avenue? We could. We could extend it further. The reason we stopped at 6th Ave, 6th Ave is a major street, and if you have a walking beat, 
We wanted to keep the area small enough where it showed the high concentration of visibility, mm -hmm. where the people in that area felt that there was always an officer around, that there was somebody there, that if you wanted to basically open your door and yell, somebody could hear you. The further we tape it, we lessen the visibility and the direct impact. There are some businesses across 6th Avenue, like the Colonial Plaza, Jimmy's, in that area right there. Mm -hmm. But our directive that we were given is the downtown area. And right now, from what we were given, the downtown area was at 6th Ave to about that 10th Ave corridor. There's nothing to say that we could not extend it out further to 5th Ave if we wanted to, or there was a desire from the committee or the board to extend it to 5th Ave. You're just stretching that resource now further and further out. So we just set that 6th Ave as a temporary boundary. And there's nothing to say that if something did happen at 5th Avenue and the officer was right there at 6th Ave, they could cross the street and respond to something happening there. And we can actually give that directive for them when they're monitoring the radio that they do hear anything going out on 5th Ave. We'd still like them to respond to 5th Ave, but the area of focus would still be from 6th to 10th Ave. So, I mean, that is a suggestion that if the it committee wants the four it, we can corners do corners of 6th Ave, right? The 7-Eleven and the stores across the street? The 7-Eleven would be technically across 6th Avenue, but it would be one of those things that was on the boundary line, where if we wanted to include 6th Avenue, the 7-Eleven, the 7 2 the coin laundry, all that stuff is on the west side of 6th Avenue, and our directive is really for that focus of the downtown corridor. Because they got a lot of problems. No, that they do have issues there. And this is, remember, this is in addition to the normal service provided by the police department. This is not to supplement, take away, or anything else. This is an added layer of service and now that the CRA will be providing to the businesses within that corridor, corridor right there. Okay. Uh, would the same be the same officer or same group of officers all the time? It'll be the same group of officers. It's, physic it's logistically impossible for it to be the same one or two officers but it'll be the same officer that you'll see on Monday will be the Monday officer. You'll see somebody on Tuesday, because remember this is in addition to the 40 hour work week that the officers already have, and there's another additional 70 hours in your plan. So it'd be, we could not expect one or two officers to cover all 70, officer, all 70 hours. We're also bound by union contract and operating procedures within the city of how we have to bid out off duty jobs. So the off duty will be bid out by contract and by policy, and the officers will be filled. Once you become accustomed to an officer on a particular day or on a particular shift, it will always be that same officer unless they have some type of emergency they call out sick, vacation, holiday, and at that time the department will find a replacement for them, but it will be the same core set of officers. So like you can just say, hi, I want to get to the line in the detail area, and then they just send an officer in there and they really kind of bring it that way. That's what they would say, oh, we get all that you can get their phone number you can get their phone number won't be an issue like I said if, if so if Luna Star Cafe I don't believe she's open seven days a week I think she takes a few days off in the week but she'll know that every Friday night this is my officer for Friday night every Sunday night she'll know this is my Sunday night officer every Wednesday night if she has something on Wednesday night she'll know hey this is my Wednesday night officer and we can generate a schedule and we can put the phone numbers for the officer there they can also call the station and one thing we would always encourage for stuff like this is that if it's ever any type of emergency, you always call the station and not that officer direct. Because the same thing with our COPS program, our COPS officers will give out their cell phones, but we still encourage everybody to always call the station direct if it's a police emergency for two reasons. One, by chance that officer may not answer their phone, and if it's something that needs immediate assistance, you want it to go through the proper channels, because there could be another officer closer than that officer. Now you're forcing that officer then to call the station and put everything in, where it's faster, where it's ever an emergency that you call 911 direct and put it out. But they would have the officer's number for other stuff to say, hey, we heard there may be somebody in the back parking lot. Can you check out this vehicle? Anything that's not occurring right then and there, yes, they could call the officer on their cell phone. Right. Does anybody have, have any other questions or comments? Okay. Thank right. you very Thank much. you for your time. <coughs> Thank you very much. Okay, now that we have a quorum, uh, can we, yes, I'm Can sorry. I do roll call, Mr. Chair? That's what you want to do, but now that we have a quorum, can we um, take the roll call? Okay. Um, Mr. Ari Speed, Ms. Kobo, Ms. Cohen, Mr. Eat, 
Ms. Espine Irvin had a, a conflict. She had to cancel. Ms. Geimer? Here. Mr. McDermott? Here. Mr. Millian? Here. Dr. Moise? Uh, Mr. Reynolds? Here. Mr. Robillard? Here. Mr. Sanchez? Here. We have quorum. Okay. Uh, can we have a motion to approve um, the October 5th meeting minutes? Certainly. Second. 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 Geimer, second. Second. Okay, all in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. Um, all right, I guess we can move to um, <coughs> action item one, the beautification grant request. Yes. Um, Nilu Inc., located at 13895 West Dixie Highway, is applying for a beautification grant to redo the parking lot and also putting new signage for the businesses that he already has or tenants. He recently repainted um, his um, building, his storefront, he said about six months ago. And at this point he needed, uh, he was short in funds and he need, would like this grant to cover the parking lot, refacing and the signs. He has, there are no violations as far as the code compliance department is concerned and there are no waivers needed from the CRA guideline. Staff is recommending approval of this grant, not to exceed $15,000. Okay, uh, would you like to come up and tell us a little bit about the project, introduce yourself with your address, with name and address? First of all, thank you to the members of CRA. My name is Iqbal Badurai. I'm from Nilu Inc. Uh, from West Dixie Highway. And uh, as uh, Ms. Harris was uh, saying, I'm trying to do the, the parking lot and uh, the sign for the business. Okay. All right, does anyone have any questions? I seem to recall an application from Nilu in the past, and I don't recall whether a grant was ever given. Have you ever received a grant from the CRA before? Yes. What kind of grant was that? That was uh, the 15000 and it was there for the repainting. Okay, so the repainting that was done No, not six months ago. No? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, um, see make sure well is our, our guidelines in here as part of the application mm -hmm. what year was that do you recall sir about six going in six years ago okay that's 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 good if it was over six years I think we can go ahead to another grant then okay um, what I would ask mr. chairman is that uh, if and what I'm hearing is folks are in favor of this is uh, if you want to go ahead and recommend approval that we also take a look back at the file um, as to the past grant, just to make sure that we're not um, overlapping. Conflict. Yeah. Okay, so does anyone like to make that motion approving the project um, with the stipulation that research be done to make sure that the grant is not in conflict with uh, the CRA guidelines? Second. Can anyone make that motion? I'll move. All right, Carol Geimer, second. Dr. Millian, any other questions? All in? Just a five or five. If, if um, I think with a beautification grant, it's only three. Yeah, I yeah. think. I need to look at the guidelines. Okay, though. but we'll, we'll verify that as part of the motion. Yeah. Right. Okay, any other questions or comments? Okay, uh, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, city um, attorney reports. Mm -hmm. Any uh, reports? Okay. 
Thank you. Um, Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I do not have any thing to report. Okay. Thank you. All right. Is there any public comment out there? Mr. Chair, yeah. uh, for the Executive Director, just uh, to mention that uh, Councilman Dizelme and I attended the FRA conference last week mm -hmm. in Tampa, and it was very informative, and I think the Councilman got a lot of wonderful information and best practices um, for the CRA, ma mainly the 7th Avenue corridor. Lauderdale, Lauderdale Lakes CRA it has a whole plan on how they're redeveloping the 7th Avenue, the 441. So it was very informative, and we came a lot out of that. The next item is the after the workshop that we held on October 12th, the RMA staff, um, they, they received a lot of wonderful input and, and so on, and they're finalizing their TIF projections. They are planning to meet with the executive director this coming week to discuss um, a draft of the plan. And then we will be meeting with our CRA attorney and, and the county and so on. We are planning to bring this to the advisory committee at the December meeting. And then it goes to the CRA board for approval and then the city council and then we transmit to the county as you know our game plan has been always to try to get it to the county by December. Um, the only point I just want to make is when I look at the calendar, it says November 30th is normally would be the first Monday of the month, which is like right after Thanksgiving, which I doubt anybody would be around for. And I see the city calendar has moved it to the December 7th meeting. So I just want to make sure that everybody has that on their calendar. Um, Why don't we change it to the, can we change the, it to the Monday before Thanksgiving? Would that be yeah, that wouldn't be enough time. That to get, you know, to do everything mm -hmm. we need to do. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, like, this, for some reason on the city calendar, when I look at it, they already have it scheduled for December, blah, 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 Monday, December. Eighth. No, no December 7th. December 7th. Yeah, it's already on the, C the city calendar as booked. Mm -hmm. So I just want to make sure you guys are aware of it. Again, m normally, it, it, that would be, like, the first Monday, really, of mm -hmm. December, because November 30th is not right. is the last one, and it, it's right after Thanksgiving. So I will make sure that you all get a reminder. Um, but just to tell you that we're moving along with that, and hopefully, you know, if there are no other bumps, we'll be um, providing an updated plan and to the CRA board, the city council, and the county to approve. And we hope to hear a, a very positive feedback from the county as to our extension. Okay. Okay. All right. And just so we don't forget, last but least, not least, is uh, Dr. Moise joined us, um, so please add him on the yes. uh, agenda as, as being late. Thank you for coming, Dr. Moise. I apologize for being late. I have no idea who was in Idaho City last evening. I got like 200 emails a day. The yeah. text was perfect for me. The email, it takes a while to get to them. Uh, yeah. okay. But now I know. It's just one day a month, right? Yes. Okay, I got it done. So I will be on time next time. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. Um, you haven't taken a look at this. This is the contact list, and we'll follow up with emails and, and phone calls if we can. If you haven't uh, RSVP'd that you're going to come to the meeting, so we'll pass this around. Okay. All right, um, Terry, uh, you and Rasha, or Rasha and Terry, you guys are doing a great job. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. We appreciate your help and your efforts. Thank you. Okay, um, is there any old business to come before us? Any new business? Do I hear a motion to adjourn? I would like to know what is it that he that we use to give money to people when they have business? What kind of inquiry we do in order to find out if those people deserve that money or not? What is the criteria, really? Everybody that come here and ask, boom, and we don't ask, we don't find out he got that money three years ago. Six years ago. Or six, six years, years, six ago. years ago. Okay, okay. Six years. Ten years ago, mm -hmm. let's say. Mm -hmm. He have a business. Mm -hmm. How was last year? Mm -hmm. How much was his gain? He put money in his pocket or no? Well, the we, way we right. need to find out uh, what is going on because. Mr. I Sanchez, the, yes. the, the CRA guidelines, as per the. Um, Stephen Zelkowitz will tell you, is based on 
the, I'm sorry, um, they have to, first of all, it's a reimbursement. They have to prove that they made the payments, that they've released, you know, the contractor has released them of all their obligations. They have to show me a canceled check that they did the work. And I always get before and after pictures of the project to, to for the documentation. As in terms of grant guidelines, if you're a property owner, you can apply for the $15,000 grant or the up to $80,000 with the 50-50 match. If you're a business owner, you can apply for the $15,000 grant. Again, the whole point of it is to beautify the area. That corridor of West Dixie Highway needs a lot of TLC. And this gentleman, the fact that he is he's already started doing some work, any building you see, even if you painted it six years ago, it needs a facelift again. And you always have to update your building and keep it maintained and beautify it. The fact that he wants to create new signs for his tenants so that his tenants can attract more businesses, that he's trying to fix his parking gar parking lot for his businesses to have more, more clients coming in is an added bonus, it's an added plus. Um, Mary's Pound, that building has been like that for years. Nobody even noticed that it was a pet shop. I didn't notice it was a pet shop. I drive through West Dixie on a regular basis. The $15,000 that y the board approved last month to give to them is gonna give them the facelift that they need so that people can pay attention to it and come in and patronize them. So I, I'm unless Mr. Zelkowitz wants to add to it. I think that was sure. pretty, I think I was pretty succinct actually myself. It, it was very succinct, but I, I think what I'm hearing from Mr. Sanchez is, is it a need-based um, grant? I mean, wh why do we give people money if they already have money? Is that what you're asking? You know, I heard you say that he put money in his pocket. Is, he, is his business successful? Why are we giving people money if they have a successful business? Our program is, and most CRA programs, and, and Rasha can tell you, and, and Terry, are not need-based. Okay, this is not like an affordable housing program where we're trying to put people who can't afford um, to, you know, buy a home or rent an apartment um, into a, you know, housable living facility. When it comes to businesses, all we're looking for, and all most CRAs are looking for, is, is a business that's located in the community redevelopment area, they're doing work on the property, and we have a program. And that's why I asked the gentleman, did you get money before? Because the way we limit it um, is that we don't give them money more often than, than five years or three years, every five to three years, whatever it is. Um, but it's not need-based. You could, you could ha not have money, or you could be, um, you know, Bill Gates, and you still get the money if you meet the criteria. It's still, Thank about, you. it's still about beautification of the area, mm -hmm. removing slum and blight, all those things we talk about with CRA. Mm -hmm. um, when it impacts a neighborhood, you really can't say, well, who has more money than the other? When you're trying to impact the neighborhood and change the, the neighborhood mm -hmm. culture, culture, you're going to have to pay attention to what they want to do rather than how much money they personally may have. And, and conceptually, it's in our best interest to put this money back into the CRA because the more we invest in these buildings, the higher property values they're going to have. The higher property values, the bigger our budget's going to be next year because we'll get more TIF revenue. I guess one key part of it is the monetary aspect like you probably mentioned in terms of it's a reimbursement base. If they do spend things, they provide you with the receipts and the invoice or whatever right. to show that these have actually happened. Yeah, permits, um, closed permits, and they have to g give us a release of lien How from the contractor. How does that happen? Well, for something this small, it's a one-time reimbursement, but if it was like the larger one, which is like 80,000, they get up to four reimbursements. Every time they submit to a reimbursement, they have to show canceled checks, everything, and they have to give me a release of lien from the contractor saying that they did get paid that amount. No, it, it, it forces participation by the owner, so it's not like a giveaway. It's like we just don't give them the money. We yeah. make sure that they do what they're supposed to do, um, and they, they, you know, they keep track of it and monitor it, so that they know that the money is legitimately spent and going for the cause that it's supposed to go for, and that is the beautification of the neighborhood. Cre you know, to try and do away with slum and blight and increase the tax revenues and employment um, in in North Miami. It's a self-imposed limitation by the by the CRA board. They created a set of guidelines 
So if they decide to exceed the guidelines, they can exceed their own guidelines by waiving them. So there's been discussions of, well, maybe, maybe we should revise the guidelines instead of always having waivers for larger projects um, to, you know, have it either be open-ended or have a larger number there just to, you know, so we don't have to look like we're always waiving our own guidelines. But, you know, it's a self-imposed, um, well, I mean, it depends on the project. I mean, we've had a number of um, larger successful projects, um, but when you get into those larger numbers, um, it, it may not always be a, a needs-based thing, but there's something called like the but-for test mm -hmm. that, you know, sometimes CRAs like to implement. Would this project go forward but for this grant? So, you know, that's something else that folks can look at, um, you know, when it comes to the larger projects as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Toyota de Gal, for example, they promised 30 jobs. And I asked, you know, what, what's the problem? They have the money in their pocket, However, what they're providing in exchange was 30 local jobs, and they provide reports. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah, Regularly, they send reports and mm -hmm. so on. Quarterly. So it, you know, it depends. It's the you know economic development, brick and mortar, beautification, or the capital part that you're looking at creating opportunities and jobs for people in the community. Okay, let me. I just went in my mind. Trust me, I drove down in Chicago. First time I down here from New York. That building was. The river was dirty. Now, if you drop down now, that building is gently, mm -hmm. very good in shape, nice in the building, and it is very near to David Smith. I can tell you that from the beginning, he spent most of the money by himself, one, with one package. Now, I surprised to see him tonight. <laughs> if he came down, he's <laughs> a <laughs> But he's a good man, he's a good businessman. Hmm? No, but that was not working. Yeah, 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 we understand it, but clearly, yeah. All right, um, I think we had a motion on the floor to adjourn. Oh, wait, wait, wait. The, uh, the director is for work done on the outside, not just on the building, or is it both? Can it be both? This one is a beautification. This is outside. This is outside. But is there any uh, any other projects that we can do mm -hmm. on the inside? There, there's certain improvements we can do inside as long as it's part of the building, like uh, equipment, like an air conditioning system or something, but it won't pay for, um, you know, chairs. yes, like tables and chairs, like furniture, mm -hmm. equipment, inventory. Things you could um, move. Things that someone could take out very easily. So okay. it doesn't pay for that, and it doesn't pay for things like rent um, and, and things like that. So. And we take, yeah, if it was dispersed, that makes it negative, doesn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah. So if we have no cash. One I instance think been, where I they I had think been waivers they've been waivers that. where they had the contractor and the the applicant where they cut the check directly to both and they had to sign for it. But I mean it depends on again the grant amount that you're asking for. Hmm. Any other questions? Okay. Mr. Reynolds had moved to adjourn. Yeah. I needed a second. Yes. Do I second? Hudson? Second. Second? Mr. Hudson. Okay. All right. Uh, all in favor say aye. Okay, thank you all very much for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.